Now, here's a little treat for you guys because you've been so good <laughs> and you're such loving, adorable little mommies that uh, put this together for you. <laughs> Hope you enjoy this. This is just for you guys. Hey, buddy. It's Top Dog. Hey, buddy. It's Top Dog. Hey, buddy. It's Top Dog. <laughs> you need to wipe hey, down. Buddy. It's Top Dog. Now, uh, it's been a while since we've had Top Dog on. I gave him a shout earlier, and uh, as always, he just kind of takes it where he wants. I don't really have to ask much. He just kind of talks. So this was recorded earlier today. This was oh, wow. A fresh off the presses. Fresh phone call, and here's what the man had to say. I hope you enjoy it. Hello? Hey, Dad. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Yo, what's going on? I was just playing chess game here. Yeah. How you do? How you doing? How was your day? Well, it was good. You know, I mean, I uh, had it. You know, I start off the day with a a great shit. Okay. <laughs> it's right out yeah, of the gate. Yeah. Work or? Well, yeah, it's a work. You know, I think one of the things I was thinking today that you know, over the life you get, in particular when you're a man, you know, starting the day off with a big dump <laughs> makes you feel good. Pain? What's that? Is it 8:15? Yeah, it's eight fifteen. What's it? Eight fifteen is generally bombs away time for me. Okay, and, and it makes you feel good. You think? Oh, it makes you feel great. You know? Yeah. I mean, I charge back in the office, and you know, feel like you got this little burst of energy. And, and I was thinking about, you know, how poor women don't appreciate the fact that that you know they they have eat sushi, and they eat sushi. you really can't have a a big dump mm. if you're into sushi. I don't know. I beg to differ. Because really? it's just not, well, there's not much to it. Think about it. <laughs> you know, you get, you know, it, it's, so most women, particularly these thin women, a lot of, you know, attra- young, attractive women, they don't really know what it's like to have. They don't know the joy. Well, they don't have the joy. They don't know what it's like to have a thunder, you know, a slide and glide, a blaster, thunder dump. I mean, you know, it's it's like drop, drop. That's it. Right. You understand that he's wow. really thought about right. that thin, small women right. don't understand the joy right. of taking a huge shit. <laughs> and I also like that he's kind of branded himself now. Oh, yeah. Like, it's not just the thunder dump. It's the, what slide is it? Slide and the glide. Sl- slide and glide. The blaster. The, yeah. Sloppy Joe. I mean, he's got a whole brand. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's named them. Wow. Yeah. I'm really impressed. And yeah. Skinny bitches don't know. They don't know. That's what Top Dog's message is today. Mm. You skinny bitches don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can't, you know, make any noise. It's just kind of, yep, they're done. And I think it's just one of the, one of the, another one of the advantages of being a guy. Is that we take huge shits. Oh, I think it's one of the great advantages of being a man. It's sure. advantage. I think he's right. So you're basically like saying, though, that if you're into sushi, you're not going to even experience a great big old shit. Oh, it's it's not going to happen. Not in the carts. Not in the carts. So what if you what if what if you have a lot of sushi though? Because that's a lot of you know. Well, first of all, I'll be honest. Have you ever been in a sushi bar and see a woman have a lot of sushi? Seriously? No, I mean I haven't. I've, I've eaten a lot of sushi. But I, I don't remember how it affected my, my shit. I just remember that I've eaten a lot of sushi before. Yeah. No, but, but, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, women just don't have, you know, the thing women don't enjoy what men go through when they have, you know, the great big <laughs> mega dumps. Okay. What, it's just one of the joys. What about, what about, what about big broads, though? You see some big old heifers out there. You think well, you know, there are, yeah, there, there is, there is, uh, there are, <laughs> there are some big ones out there. I mean, you're, you're right about that. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a great question. I'm not really sure. Um, that, that, I mean, I see, I see women walking around that are 280, three bills. You know, they take a pretty big dump, you know? Yeah, a lot of them do. A lot of them do. You know, they they take uh, they take some big ones. That's for sure. It's almost scary uh, what that must be like. <laughs> but you know, I've never really been in a in a ladies' room 
when they're doing their duty. So I really kind of don't know, you know, what some of them really go through. I really don't. Now, can I ask you? It's a sympathetic what about, answer. What about, I've never been in a lady's room. Mm. Do you hear a lot of noises? Like, like you know, do you hear a lot of farts and no, stuff? No, and, and that's my my biggest qualm with ladies' room etiquette. I mean, I've worked in, like, offices. Women are more embarrassed. Yeah. So what you'll hear is a lot of camouflaging sounds. Flushing. Flushing. A lot of women are too embarrassed to shit at the office. Yeah. It's a different culture for girls. What about, like, a, an airport bathroom? Oh, animals. Animals? I got to tell you, the airport bathrooms smell like men's bathrooms. They do, huh? Fucking horrendous. Because people are on these flights. Yeah. They get off. But you do you no hear choice. noises, too? No. 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 Not a wow. lot of sounds, a lot of smells. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's rare. Now, when you're in a public restroom, okay, like let's say yeah. a multiple tall public restroom, mm-hmm. and you sit down mm-hmm. to shit, do you have any shyness? about the noise that you're making? Oh, of course not. Oh, no, no, no. Absolutely not. You go for it? Oh, I go for it. I mean, (laughs) listen, I'm, you know, I want, I want them to know what's going on here, okay? (laughs) Oh, really? Oh, sure. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I mean, I go for the gold on this, let me tell you. So you don't care if it makes a lot of noise? No, not at all. Not at all. Absolutely not. And you're actually, and, you're actually striving for it. Well, you know, I tell you, it's like it's like the hunter when he's out there hunting when his gun makes a loud bang. Does it bother him if the sound bothers somebody another hunter? It's a great analogy. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, doesn't bother. Him. Absolutely not. That's, that's I like to hear that. Hey, somebody wants me to ask you, how much does it upset you when you sit down somewhere and you find that they have single-ply toilet paper? <laughs> oh, it's the worst. Now, one of you guys <laughs> did, and I'm sorry I couldn't give you your proper credit, but one of you did either tweet me or write into the uh, your I, I remember this question. podcast at Gmail. And, and uh, so I, you know, I got your question in there, but it's very upsetting to him. You know, I really have become a a connoisseur of toilet paper, mm. and yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I you can judge an institution by the quality of toilet paper. He's right. They have. Oh yeah, and, true that. Oh really? Yeah. And this is what this is why I kind of got in the countertop wipes because if you think <laughs> about it, uh-huh. not everybody washes their hands when they're done in the bathroom. That's right. And if you have single ply toilet paper, and you know sometimes you, let's face it, you punch a hole in it, you know, mm. some of the yeah. stuff gets on your finger, and you know if you don't wash your hands, then that gets on the doorknob and stuff, mm. and so you don't have that problem with countertop wipes because you're not going to punch through there. It really is a, a form of public cleanliness. Mm. You're you're really getting behind these countertop wipes again. Well, you know, if you think about it, it, it's it's good it's good for public health because I know when I leave the restaurant, I'm not spreading any germs. There's going to be no E. coli in my building, okay? Right. And and, and secondly, you know, it uh, you know if every once in a while, you know, when you go to the bathroom, sometimes you, you get little, you know, people sometimes get pimples on their butt and things like. That. I never had that problem with countertop wipes. It kills everything. <laughs> It says ninety nine point nine nine on ninety nine point nine nine on the the can there where it comes in, and it does. Yeah, it kills your skin yeah, no, I mean, too. It's, you know, it's designed for like like industrial strength cleaning though. It's, it's designed for cleaning. I know, I know, but you know what? Yeah. If 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 when we uh, that's why you know you look at this is you know we're the United States of America. You know we we have. You know, when we won World War II, we dropped in two nuclear bombs, okay? I mean, yeah. I've always been a believer that you're better to overkill than underkill. That's kind of my motto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it's like... It's it just takes... You just, you it's just miss with... It's the same philosophy, but with your asshole. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, you think about it. Yeah, exactly. 
And mm-hmm. actually, if they're doing, I'm doing the public a, a service by practicing. And all this stuff about all this stuff about practicing safe sex and all this stuff you see advertised, and nobody ever talks about practicing safe yet. And I do. He's got a point. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, so. You know, you're not going to find my DNA where it doesn't belong. Let's put it that way. There you go. You know, he's he's really go. cornered a brand here, and I, I think that maybe instead of Dr. Phil, we have Top Dog Top telling Dog. you how to clean your butthole and, and keep it clean, and keep it safe. Some, it, I'm sure it's upsetting to some. Oh, my God, you guys are so disgusting. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Top Dog. Wait, yeah. Do you know what I love most about him? Mm. His life-affirming unapologetic way of shitting yeah he says fuck you i'm gonna dump in public i'm gonna do it with gusto mm-hmm. i'm gonna embrace it i'm gonna yeah. be me and and there's listen that's a promising message to any of our listeners that's all real guys that's the genuine guy right yes. there. yes that's the real deal you take a shit as loud as you want mm-hmm. a life-affirming dump and wipe with whatever you want mm-hmm. and and don't say i'm sorry to anybody nope enjoy it Enjoy it. Enjoy, Enjoy it. it. Brody yeah. Stevens. So there you have it. Some top dog to uh, to carry you through the week. Um, so we discussed this afterwards. You had this call. We we're like, wow, that's pretty incredible. And uh, we decided, I mean, how do you decipher put information like this? Well, who do you talk to to really get guidance in, in your life? Well, who do you decide on, you know, who to vote for? I, I go to my elders. I go to my, my father. Yeah. Because he uh, knows what the fuck is up. My dad's lived through a lot of stuff. Dad's knows what dad's knows what you're the only dad I ever know. They knows what to do. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we asked our dads. We asked our dads to uh to weigh in um and and tell us what they thought. Um and we uh we got we got real into it, man. Like our dads didn't pull any punches. Right. They, <laughs> well, you know, in the line of uh, of honoring people that speak their minds, our dads are not a couple of dads that hold back. Very, very direct dads. They're going to say what the fuck they want when they want. So first up, um, we got Top Dog um, <laughs> sharing some of his views, mm. and um, well, you know what that means. Hey, buddy, it's Top Dog. Hey, buddy. Top dog. Hey, buddy. It's top dog. You need to wipe hey, down. Buddy. It's top dog. Now, I'm not going to lie. I mean, you guys know top dog. He's old school. He's Marine conservative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We get right into it, man. Um, here's what he had to say. Hello? Hello? Hey. Hey, hey buddy. Hey, buddy. How are you? Doing pretty good. Okay. What's up, bro? Well, we um we got the uh, official Green Party candidate that the interview oh, was that's right, yeah. fucked up. You told Peace me Green freedom. Party. Freedom. Sorry. Um, what party the candidate? Out. The Green Party candidate. Ah, Peace oh, yeah. and Freedom. I know. Shit. Uh, who's Roseanne Barr? Fuck Remember God. the television star of this community? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't stand her. Oh no. <laughs> oh, really? Why? Oh, oh, I just think, I mean, she's so obnoxious. <laughs> you know, yeah. She, I mean, she is, you know, and her positions are not supported by research. They're just, oh, Jesus, you know, she, she, the basis for her opinions is just by being loud. <laughs> what the, again, you know, you know what? He's a patriarchy. Like, That's why. Top dog. Oh, yeah? This is patriarchal nonsense. Oh, yeah, this is good. All right. <laughs> You know, a hurricane is is there, and you have to deal with it. It's like her. Oh, Jesus. Right. Oh, so she's like a hurricane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, she is. Oh, I mean, <laughs> Jesus. Do you think, what are, what are her chances of winning this election, what do you think? Okay, I think the chances that the next Olympics will be on Mars are mm-hmm. greater than her winning Wow. Well, 
And that would be the 2016 Olympics or the 20? The 20, I think. The, the, well, the I'm 20, glad you clarified, Tommy. In, Thank in you. Brazil. For, thanks. So I think so the 20, 2020 Olympics, yeah. I think they'd be greater I, for her to have those on Mars than her to win the, win the election. You guys are knocking my candidate yeah, here. She did have a good show, though. I like her show a lot. Did you like her show? No. <laughs> What? You know, I like don't like in. most liberal shows. It's not really it's a, a liberal it's a show. Family no, sitcom. but that's Top Dog, man. The one I do actually like. This is, is hilarious. Uh, right believe it or not, is Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> what? Not liberal. Yeah, that's a talk show, though. I know. I like her show. He loves Ellen. What do you think in general? Can you process that for no, a second? No, no. He goes, I don't like liberal. And then Ellen, who's like, Ellen. who's the biggest lesbian liberal on the planet. He's like, I like Ellen. <laughs> he likes Ellen. Mm-hmm. You know why, though? Because Ellen's not loud and in your face, and Roseanne is loud and in your face. Right. And he doesn't like it because it's not ladylike. It's now, I think picture. Roseanne would be like, oh, he doesn't like... A broad that talks, but bro- she doesn't know who he's married to. <laughs> he, he doesn't oh, like a right, broad right. that talks. All right. Right. Well, about liberals. Well, you know, they have this, this, this unrealistic view of the world. They don't understand that everything in life has to be paid for by somebody. And this theory is, we'll just get the rich to pay for it. Well, when you run out of rich... <laughs> Then how are you going to do it? So I yeah. think that I think that they confuse good intentions with reality, and the reality is there's not enough money to go around. What? Are there a shortage yeah. of rich people now? Yeah. I don't think there's ever been a shortage of the wealthy. Uh, well, yeah, he's saying that that's the the problem with like um, like left leaning economic policies, right? Is that no, they're always are saying, you know, they're always adding things to to pay for it. There's a spending problem. Right. You you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but then, you know, just charge it to Richie. Charge it to to the man. That's what he's that's what he's saying. Take take down Whitey. That that's what I'm saying. I I, I like that but policy. But that but that policy's <clears throat> okay. That's that's a good policy. But what where's the money going to come the from? Ma- the man. Look, the man's got all the money. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the Roseanne's right. The you know, the man's got all the money and we got to take down the man. You should be her spokesman. I am. I am. Now, man. Do you what is your position on the two let's say favored candidates? realistic possible winners, Romney and Obama. What do you think of Mitt Romney as a candidate? Well, you know, I think I, I'm voting for Romney. Can you believe that? I can't believe that. Can you believe it. that? I love him so much. I know. And the only reason that, like, it's hard for me to <laughs> to process this, I know. but I go, uh, the only reason actually that I can deal with him saying that is because he is well informed and intelligent and chooses to do that. You know what I mean? Yes, like, yes. He actually is choosing that knowing everything. Yeah. Well, your father is not a, a, a dopey guy. He's an intelligent man. Yeah, he's yeah. a conservative. It's hard. It's Listen, awesome. he's he was in the Marines. He's just a conservative guy. I know. That's I his know. values. I still love him, but of it's, hard. it's I still love him. It's hard. It's of hard course. to hear. But you know, he reminds me of a computer generated candidate. I mean, he's like the best-looking presidential candidate in modern time. You know, I mean, he, he doesn't have any physical flaws. He, he's almost so... You, you, if, you, if you told a computer to design a candidate, it would, be, it would, spit, out, it would spit out Romney. Seriously, it would. He reminds me... Um, of, you know, I, I expect you to vote? go to Toys R Us... And in the Barbie section, find Mitt Romney in the Barbie case, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a good, that's true. He looks kind of like, actually, like Ken. Yeah, what do you think? Why, why are you going to vote for him, though? Because he is the candidate that is going to address our problems with the fact that Obama has put on $4 trillion of new debt. And his solution is, well, if we just tax the rich two fifty and up, we'll solve that problem. No, you don't. Yeah. If you tax two fifty and up, you're still going to have a trillion dollar deficit. So, I think he's, in, you know, he's, he just hasn't dealt with reality. 
And the truth of the matter is, if you look the last four years, you know, he passed Obamacare, which I don't think is going to work. And so we basically had, no, I don't. And so we had four (laughs) years of basically press conferences. Now, the guy's a great speaker. You know, he'll probably, after he leaves office, you know, start his own teleprompter company, okay? Because the guy is great with a teleprompter. He is. I do think Obamacare is going to work. I have faith in it. I hope it works. I hope it works, too. I'm, all, I'm, I'm kind of about it. I, I like it so far. Yeah, I know. I'm, I mean, I'm just saying I hope. I mean, you know, it's kind of early to say whether it's going to be a success or failure, obviously, but I do hope it works. I love yeah. the, um, the I- idea behind the universal health care plan. I always feel, I feel like health care is something personally that should be provided to people whether or not they have money or not. Well, I mean, we're the, one of the wealthiest countries in the world. We should have health care yeah, for everybody. It's bananas that we don't. I know. I know. Tardy. is a glib public speaker, but behind all the speeches and stuff, he really hasn't done anything. I disagree with that. Too. Yeah. And he blames the Republicans. It's interesting how he blames the Republicans for everything that went wrong, yet he takes credit for the four million new jobs. So he's a candidate. That's, um, every, that's every politician, though. That's not well, of course they do that. <laughs> right, but that's I'm pointing that out to him that, like, he's saying that, like, Obama, like, but that's what all, all politicians are play the spin game. That's what it's all yes. about. But the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, we really haven't done that well uh, the last four years. You know, still too many people don't have jobs. Yeah, but I mean, he did inherit quite a problem when he got to office. Well, of course he did. Yeah. Listen, he inherited a big problem. He inherited a big problem. And the one thing he did, he actually did two things that I like. Here we go. I, I was in favor of the auto bailout, and it worked. And the Republicans, you know, I'm a Republican, but my Republican friends forget, most Americans forget this because they're not tuned politically like I am. We bailed out Lockheed Aircraft in nineteen seventy four. Oh. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty million bucks. We forgot about that. Okay. The Republicans were all in favor of that. And he killed Osama bin Laden. Okay. So those are the two you know, things those are top, top dog <laughs> signs off on. So <laughs> we have this um measure B. Oh that's when I get into measure B, but that was whatever. Um well. Listen, we can't judge Top Dog. No, he love he likes who he likes, you and you know what? You can't and, judge anybody for their political leanings. And here's it's, the other thing too: you silly. can't sway that man. I've no. had, but can I tell you the thing that's the most upsetting to me hmm. is um, this was I you know I, I'm I'm cool and under control, and but I've had conversations with him where I get like fired up about this type of shit. Hmm. You don't even get he doesn't even raise his voice, like you don't. You're not going to sway him. You're not going to change his mind. Mm-hmm. You're also not going to get like a. He's not going to get like passionate. You argue. can't handle the it, truth. Uh, he does, yeah, he's he, not going to do he that. He stays totally chill, like he's in a bunker and there's a new fire coming. <laughs> and the out. Viet Cong are all yeah, over Charlie's Adam. Yeah, he Adam. stays in control. <laughs> he doesn't like. I get like, what the fuck? He does not do any of that because your father has actually very cogent thoughts. He yeah. has the stuff thought out. This yeah. is this is his theory thinks, and man. how he likes his world to be. Yep. Well, let's and um the Viet Cong can't uh, change that. Hey buddy. It's top dog. Hey buddy. It's top dog. Hey buddy. It's top dog. You need to wipe hey, down. Buddy. It's top dog. <laughs> <laughs> I called Uh-oh. him today, and first of all, it's such a you get so many real that you get to experience my father the way I do Which in is this a few so times. Special. Uh, a the way it starts. I'll just play it a little for you, and, and you'll see what I'm. This is exactly what I go through every time <laughs> I talk to my dad. Hey, dad. Hello. Hey, dad. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hey, buddy. Hey. Yeah. Hold on one second. Hold on. Tommy. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Okay, hold on a second. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> What's up? What is going on? What happens like every 
every time I talk to my dad. <laughs> was that real? Yeah, that was real. I thought that was that wasn't edited together. No, that was totally genuine. He, what's going on? I have no idea. And I don't ask he, anymore. Why can't he figure out how to like? There's not only that. There's wait. There's phone <laughs> breathing coming up where he breathes <laughs> with his. He goes. <sighs> right. No, it's the nose. He lets the the <laughs> mouth part of the phone sit above his mouth, Ugh. and he breathes into the phone. Like the way when you have like a three-year-old and you hand them the phone, they'll go like... Right, right. He does that. Right. And my father's infamous for his change of topic mid-sentence. <laughs> he just does that. So then I do it back to him. Man? Oh, just sit here chilling. Yeah? What's going on? Yeah, it's just uh, mm. kind of in that holiday mode. Yeah. Looking forward to your visit. Can't wait. Cannot wait to come home. Oh, we're going to have a lot of fun, buddy. I'm going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do some movies, do some dog, big dog, little dog night out. Big dog, little dog. (laughs) Oh. Yeah. You know, uh, football. Oh, it's going to be fun. Uh, You know, and, uh, you know, we can do. So, so mom. You hear the breathing? He sounds like a pervert with the breathing. (laughs) What's with the breathing? I've tried to give him shit about it for years. You know, we're going to go. He goes, and he's not like, this is him. He holds, and I've been like, can you not? I've said this before. It's hard to say to your own. I go, can you not breathe into the phone, man? He'll be like, Tommy, like that. Just. But he doesn't know that he's doing that, does he? He knows now. The other day, she says to me, um, how was, um, okay, oh, I don't know if you caught that right there. I didn't. He was saying something, and then he just changed the topic. I cut it out, because it was just (laughs) nothing to talk about. But so I do the same thing to him. So he just like is talking <laughs> uh, football, right? Oh, it's gonna be fun, uh, you know. And uh, you know we can do. So so mom the other day she that was a sentence right there. That's so so we can do. Yeah. And he goes so mom the other day. Yeah, you hear it? Yes. He's like so we can do. Uh, so, so mom the other day, and then he said some. I just cut it out because it is has he stone. You know when you smoke pot, you get like fuck. That. No, he's not stone. But then I to him in response, I go. Yeah, so anyway, and I just changed it because he does it to me now. So to me, yeah. How was, um, so you said you had some, uh, I was thinking about it. The hear him breathing? Was, you know, I've been doing this juicing thing. Did you try some juices yet? Well, we're trying to figure out the, we went juicing shopping yesterday and the mom tried to juice some stuff and it just turned into a disaster. Really? Oh, yeah. So we kind of need some mechanical help on this. Okay. Well, one of the things you're going to like is that when you really get into some juicing, your your shits are pretty exciting. That that that's uh, for me. Screw the health reasons. That's the reason to do it. Okay. Yeah, I know. When you, when you get older, that's it becomes a much more important day of your life. Yeah, I mean it really does. Well, it's very. Um, they get you get a lot of blasters and a lot of thunder dumps. Because there's so many, your, your body, I think, is so... <laughs> Wait, it's so distracting. <laughs> I don't even listen. It's so crazy. <laughs> Wait, but how come you sound so much clearer now? Because I used the computer and the mics here to record the call. I didn't use that Oh, you're that so calm. App. Yeah. That is so funny because you sound, it's even funnier when it's you sounding crystal clear and then it's yeah. him literally like... <clears throat> This like he, is every phone call with my father for the last 20 years. It sounds like he's scuba diving. Like, you know when you breathe into the thing? And it's all yeah. because of his phone placement, <laughs> and you can't tell him shit. Right. Like, you try to? No. you, you no. It's just a, a guy you can't tell that to. I well, mean, I have told him. It's not that I don't tell him. I've been like, hey, can you stop breathing into the phone, man? And he'll be like, Tommy. <laughs> And just like that's the end of the conversation. But he doesn't know what that sounds. He's he's been doing this for too long. He's been doing it forever. Yeah. I think it actually, in a weird way, when he's holding it, I think he enjoys hearing his breathing through uh, the phone. Ah, sure. Do you know what I mean? Like when yes. you're doing it, you're like, mm. it's like a sub. Like you're like, yeah, you're like, feels good. It's like you can you can hear yourself. Right, right, right. It's like hearing yourself talk. Yeah. Jesus is making me crazy. Yeah. It's We're well with all the, the nutrients. Yeah. Especially especially if it's a change of like pace for you. Like if you don't usually have that many fruits <laughs> and vegetables when you do, oh, so, yeah. it right. really goes through you, you know? Oh, I can imagine it goes through. Yeah, I mean, and you know, the more you shit today, the happier you are. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 
I mean, uh, you had good post Thanksgiving. You said though, right? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I kind of nibbled all day long. Yeah, and so I didn't have that great big Thanksgiving dump. I had, you know, <laughs> pretty good dump to start, and then I had another dump, and then I had two half dumps. Okay. Okay. So I gave myself. It was a three dump day, but I had two really too many dumps. Okay, I didn't count them wow. as a full dump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the, but you had your final, that third dump came pretty early, you said. Yeah, I was basically in three dumps by, by 1230. Holy cow, that's pretty, that's pretty that's serious. a lot though. of shits. It is, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, um, you know, but then I, I, I felt, felt real good and, and nothing came the rest of the day. I was kind of surprised. Kind of a letdown, too. Well, it is, you know, when you you look forward to that. Usually I have, you know, something in the afternoon, but, um, you know, it also has to do with the diet's a little different in Thanksgiving. I ate a lot of stuffing, which I love, and I nibbled at the stuffing. I kind of snacked at the stuffing. When I got home in the afternoon, I had a little stuffing. Before I went to bed at night, I had some stuff. So I really cheated with the stuffing. Yeah. You know, and, and, and Mom puts sausage in the stuffing, which makes it. Oh, that's even uh, better. Uh, I can listen to him that's all day. good stuff. Outstanding stuff. And then Outstanding. the next day, the next day, you return the favor and you put the stuffing in the toilet. Oh, did I ever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wouldn't have to wait till next year to get stuff. You know, she only cooks stuffing once a year. Yeah. But maybe have, when you come. Oh yeah, maybe when I come, she'll cook, she'll cook it. I hope so. Yeah. You know. By the way, I'm getting you some of the high end toilet paper when you come. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in your room. You know the real. Well, I got out consumer reports, and I'm going to get you the white. This is kind of big for me. I'm getting your white cloud. Oh, is that, that's the good stuff, huh? It's the good stuff. White cloud. I didn't even white know about cloud. this. That's what the highest this? rated toilet paper. Are you serious? Yeah. Wait a minute. Who he makes pulled it, this? Procter & Gamble makes it. Same people that make Charmin, but this is their top shelf I think we shit just, tickets. I think we just found a sponsor for the show. I know. Here, he tells you more. Came out number one. I did this. I don't know if you've ever checked Consumer Reports for toilet paper, but White Cloud came out number one. So. Who makes what? Is White Cloud its own brand? Wow. White Cloud is made by Procter & Gamble. They make Charmin and White Cloud, but White Cloud is kind of the, you know, the, the kind of the, the, you know, what? Is it the toilet paper of the elite? Yeah, it really is. If you have White Cloud, then... You know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know. There you go, really, guys. I mean, it. You guys, listeners, have been always asking us about TP. You got the top dog endorsement right there. White Cloud is what the bosses use to wipe their ass. It's like velvet. <laughs> Absolutely. It I mean, is. It, it's, the, it's the gray goose of uh, toilet paper. That's mm. awesome, Dad. Wow. Do you have any um, good shits at work lately? No, nothing, really. Oh. I mean, uh, yeah, well, you know, I've been watching when I've been eating a little bit. I've been trying to lose a little weight. You know, I uh, had salmon last night. Whenever I have salmon, that, that, uh, I had the best salmon. I bought this Scotty salmon the other day. Oh, so good. Uh, that usually doesn't result in anything, you know, Substantial. that you can brag about. Yeah. Can't really brag about it, you know, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the the big thing, of course, is when you have, you go out to dinner and you have the, you know, the appetizer and, you know, the steak, mashed potatoes, beans, the salad, dessert, where you really kind of just, then, you know, you get ready to rumble the next day. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I think yeah. he has a point. Um, whenever I eat an, a wide array of food, mm -hmm. I have to shit violently, like, I, I don't know if you even heard me, but Thanksgiving evening after we went to bed, I woke up at 3 a.m. Didn't hear a thing. Oh, I took a full Crazy thunder shit. dump at really? 3 a.m. with my cousin, your cousin it, sleeping here. Did you put a room. fan on? Fan or no? I didn't fan it because I didn't want to wake anybody up. Well, how was the noise of the shit? Fine, who cares? Let them enjoy it. Um, you know what else that he points out? Restaurants. A lot of times people don't think about it. They'll think about, oh, but I just had this. And they don't realize that a lot of times... A lot of restaurants prepare anything with just tons of butter. That's the bet. That's what makes it taste so good. Which makes it taste delicious. Yeah. And which makes you shit crazier. That's why I shit because I yeah. use a lot of butter. A lot of in, butter will make you shit like that. In our stuffing, that sure. I made. Yeah. Higher fat, and yeah, it'll go right through you. Oof. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Put yeah. that butter in there, and you really get to enjoy that shit. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. Um, 
Hey, uh, yeah, because you told me a while ago that you had one at work where you you sat down and you went and then you looked over and there was no TP. And I was oh, like, I had to go real fast. Didn't have time to do my reconnaissance on. And I sat down there and, oh, my God, you know, there was like, oh, shit. So what I had to do, you know, is I had to, of course, you don't want to put your underpants back up because, you know. But the trouble is when you stand up and I had to do my little two-step around to the next stall. It smushes all together. Well, yeah, your cheeks go together. And so that was really, you know, I, I basically pretty much used up the rest of the roll of toilet paper to get get it clean, you know. <laughs> yeah. So he's having multi-wipe issues as well, which well, is what we, I've been having lately. We get to that right now. Oh, okay. I don't want to jump the, the gun. Big, big mistake on my part. Big mess. You might as well jump in the shower at that point. Right? Thank you. Well, there's been times at home when I've had to do that. I've done that, too. Oh, I've done that, you know, and, you know, I mean, there's been times when I, I've actually had to do that, really. No, okay. Switching topic. <laughs> now, if that doesn't make you want to buy a Top Dog shirt, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what will, you guys. By the way, uh, did it, you know this, that we're, we're repackaging the uh, the jeans bundle? What? You know, we've gone from the Super Mommy pack mm-hmm. to the highest, tightest jeans bundle. Mm. Well, we phased out the kingfish shirt which used to be part of that right so now it's called the wipe down collection (laughs) and i didn't even know we did this yeah yeah when did this happen like today because we the the kingfish shirts officially it's done it's it's extinct so we had to switch it up now you get a top dog shirt and all three albums and your poster wow uh for 40 bucks it's not bad it's It's not bad at all yeah yeah, it's that would Christmas if gift, you man. if you were to order each of those things individually, yeah. it would be over sixty dollars. Yeah, so you get it for a good deal. You get Top Dog shirt, three albums, Comedy. and the poster. Yeah, it's good. It's a good it's deal. Pretty good, man. Yeah, Do and it. the uh, I should have hopefully <laughs> next week. Next week is the return of Yoshi. Ugh. We'll have Yoshi back, who was a huge hit on a the popular show. Popular demand, and he really has some shit he wants to talk about. He's been <laughs> he's been hitting me up. He's got uh, stories, and hopefully, during that episode, we will have the new the the shirt we've been talking <gasps> about. You're kidding! I think it'll be ready for next week. All right, I so. love the Top Dog shirt because it's patriotic as sure. well. Yeah. Do you know that people who don't even listen to the podcast after shows, like I'll bring some occasionally. Yeah. yeah. And people just love the design. Sure. And they yeah. Buy it, and you're of like, course. do you even know Top Dog? Top Dog and no, like, they're like, fuck it. It's red, white, and blue, and it's yeah. awesome. It's awesome, man. I'm like, all right. Um, you said uh, you told mom you want a skeet shooting jacket. <laughs> yeah, because I'm I'm buying a shotgun this week. I'm getting back okay. into that. And Are you gonna- getting back into that? <laughs> you go to that place? Uh, th- yeah, yeah. I'll take you, been- you down there. We'll take you down there, and and we can uh, go skeet shooting. Okay? Have you been down there yet? Gosh. Yeah, I went down there one time. Loved I went. It. I went down there like a year ago, Loved and I had it. the best time. Yeah. So oh, I'm gonna. Can do we the go? Shotgun. Can we go when I'm home? That's the plan. Okay. I, I really want to do that. I'm only home a week, so i got to make the most of those days. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll go down there and uh, let's leave early afternoon. We'll do that. Okay. Well, I love you, buddy. I love you too, Dad. I'll talk okay, to you later. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay. There you go. I love him so much. He's the best. Top uh, dog. Top dog. We gave it to you. Full top dog experience. Remember, um, Tommy, when I visited you guys in Vero first time, mm-hmm. and uh, your dad took a shooting... Oh yeah, we went to a gun range. A real and I, I he think... pulled out the Desert Eagle three fifty seven, <laughs> yeah, hand cannon. But can I tell you what? I think he was expecting me to be a total California girl. Like, hey. He'd be like, oh, guns are bad. Yeah. But my dad, mm-hmm. he didn't know this. My dad yeah. loves guns too. Sure. So this girl learned how to shoot guns from the yeah. time she was eight years old. Actually, I think when we showed up there, didn't his gun jam? And the guy behind the counter was like, yeah. I don't know. And he was like, swing. Yeah. We were like, dude, put the gun, gun down. Gun safety man. 101. So I think we actually borrowed like a nine millimeter and went and okay. shot in the range. Um, it, it was pretty awesome. But what I'm really excited about, and there's so much of this that we're actually going to break it up over a, a couple of weeks because there's okay. just too much of this. But uh, I had some, some, we had some interesting talks with. Um, Top Dog, and we got uh, the best part, of course, is trying oh to get Charo to listen so that she gets upset. But <laughs> I started off with Top Dog, and uh, in a in a territory that you'll know. Hey, buddy, it's Top Dog. Hey, buddy, it's 
Stop dog. <laughs> hey buddy. Stop dog. You need to wipe hey, down. Buddy. Stop dog. So, you guys know from <laughs> previous episodes that Top Dog does not like dual lane McDonald's. Mm-mm. This is a real issue with him. Well, I get home, and the first thing my mom tells me is, your father got very upset uh, earlier today. And I was like, what happened? She's like, something about McDonald's. <laughs> so, I run into his little uh, man cave den. And I'm like, dude, what's up? I just wanted to know what was going on at McDonald's because I thought, you know, I didn't know we would have more incidents. Right. You know? Something happened at McDonald's? You said you said you had a... I remember you had a, a, a thing about them a few months ago about the dual lanes. You don't, don't like, like them? I don't like the dual lanes. Yeah. What, what happened today or yet? When was it? Yesterday or today? Today and, and today. What happened? I went in there to order a... Um, Coffee. By the way, <laughs> world's best coffee, according to my dad. At, at Dog, McDonald's. If you could give him gourmet yeah. French press. Not interested. This is $70 an ounce coffee. He'll right. be like, it's not McDonald's. And uh, the two cars to the left of me just kept going. Dual lane? Yeah. And I was in the right lane. Nobody, Shouldn't have gone nobody there. picked up. The ones that left kept ordering, so I drove up to where you pay, and I say, nobody, oh, they must not have picked up, they're supposed to pick up on the inside for that lane. I said, wait a minute, you don't answer for the, I only answer for the first lane. So I called the 800 number. You called the 800 number? Oh, my God. What do you say? I told him what happened. He said, it's ridiculous. I said, imagine, you're in the line there, and you notice everybody in the left lane being served, and you're the dumb klutz in the right lane mm. because nobody on the inside has figured out that they're supposed to do that. What did they say? Sir, we're so you know, I'm, I'm on McDonald's on behalf of McDonald's. You know, we're committed to, you know, getting the usual PR speech. Yeah. Then I do the survey. They ask you to do a survey. Yeah. Did it say that the girl really understood it? But no. Okay. And then two days ago when I was down on Palm Beach, I stopped off to get a Diet Coke. And I went into the bathroom. There's no soap in the container. Did you call the way on her? Absolutely. <laughs> and you told them? Yeah. What did they say? Oh, they, they couldn't believe it. I said, you know, by the way, not that I'm going to report this, but state law says that employees must wash their hands when they're using the restroom. That includes soap. So you're really in violation of the state law. I'm going to give you a pass on this one, but you got to do something about it. Do you have the 800 number memorized? <laughs> no. <laughs> How do you call it? <laughs> he was like Matlock there. He yeah. he pro- he sh- proposed a case. He was like, I "What can- I'm surprised is that he would return to a dual lane McDonald's after <laughs> multiple <laughs> incidents." I have these now locked in here as incidents by number. <laughs> McDonald's incident number one, two, three. <laughs> you know, it is interesting because he's had several mishaps at McDonald's and over the years. Dual lane. Dual lane. Not a fan. But also in the single lane, I don't know if you remember that incident where one of his favorite employees, I think, disappointed him one time. This was a few years back. No, it was it was one of his reliable McDonald's uh-huh. didn't have his favorite employee working. Correct. Okay. And said okay. other employee didn't perform up to favorite employee standards. You understand? Well, I know, but I mean, with, with all these disappointments, it's like, why are you going back to a place? Well, that, world's know? best coffee. Oh, right. They right. do have the world's best soft drinks. They're, they do. Their mixture, their Coke, and their Diet Coke even. Amazing. It is outrageously good. I know. Why? What is the secret? High know. carbon. I bet they load more sugar in it or the, something. The, the, there's a mixture, right? Carbonation, and then there's a... Yeah. The uh, syrup. The syrup, and, and it's always better at McDonald's. Huh, always. I know. You're right. You're right. The Diet Coke at McDonald's surpasses any. Mm-hmm. Wow. So he calls. I wonder if they know him by now. Like, did they log in the incident reports? I'm sure. I mean, my mom was telling me for a while they were just getting letters <laughs> and coupons from the McDonald's Corporation uh, at the house over I and over. S- no, I saw one on the counter oh, when we were there. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw it and thought nothing of it. Like, oh, there's <laughs> one of Top Dog's. 
<laughs> you know, redemption yeah. coupons for complaining. Yeah. yeah. I like how he's like, yeah, you have to have soap, but if you don't, you can, uh, your employees have to wash their hands. And I'm, yeah. I'm not going to report you this time. But, but, but you got to do something about that. Yeah. <laughs> He loves, you know, he loves catching somebody breaking the rules. Yeah, he's a watchdog. Yeah, definitely. I like that. Well, the other thing we got to experience um, was we were in the car after dinner, so you'll forgive uh, the audio being a little um, less than desirable. Um, and we, you brought up mm. shitting in the shit when you're at war in Vietnam. Yes, Vietnam, and you and you start talking. And the best part of this. <laughs> Is that my mom is also in the car? I forgot you didn't. You recorded this. I didn't know you were recording this. You didn't? No. Oh, because I was going to kill you for cutting her off one time. Oh, sorry. She was about to react, and you were like, well, "Yeah," and you started talking. I was like, "Oh my well, god!" Well, I didn't know you were recording. I thought you totally knew I was recording. No, really? I have no idea. Sorry, I would have fucking stepped back. Um, I have uh, diesel oil in them already. Okay. Oh, okay. And so then, when they would do is, is that at the end of the day, they, they would. Or they would burn it. They would take every day, every day, and they would. Burn Everybody it. shit together. Yeah. Well, they had multiple, multiple Port- of these but things. It all goes like a porta potty. Right, right, right. And then they would, you would, you would burn it. Okay. And it smells terrible. And that's why they call it being in Did, the shit, right? Because right. it smells mm-hmm. like shit. Mm-hmm. Did you guys? Like, would you try to shit in similar places? Like, if I took a shit here, would you come by the same area? Or you just shit wherever you want to shit? Well, you, you would, around the bush, you just find it. What you do is you dig a hole with your a trenching tool, which is a military term for shovel. Uh-huh. And remember, when you're in the kind of food you're eating, and because you're burning up so many calories, the, the, the size of poops we had were about what a dog does. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, now, now, remember, the whole point of this, <laughs> for me, is just to get my mom upset. Oh. You know, that's why I'm keeping, I'm just, I keep trying to say, oh, so where else did you shit? Did you like to shit but I there? was genuinely curious, because I, I shit in Afghanistan. Right, and you get to that. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, well, how did you guys shit in Vietnam? I, right. I honestly, did, I didn't know you were taping. Oh, I would have fucking... The military food designed to, to block you up, too. Like, MREs now, they say, are designed to be dense so that you eat once a day and then yeah, 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 yeah you're supposed to get a lot of a lot of calories out of this so right. it's called low density food but basically nobody ever had unless they had the runs one time which was just horrible <laughs> oh it's just horrible but um you know you just didn't have a lot there wasn't a lot to do you'd dig a hole in the ground you'd squat you'd do it and then you'd cover it up with put the dirt back on top of it wait when's the burning come into play this is when you're out in the bush. The burning was your back in the rear. Oh, in the rear, okay. <laughs> Mom? Do you have a comment? Well, now they have um, wag sorry. bags. Sorry. Right there. Yeah. That is when I wanted to. I was like, oh, sorry. Shit. I didn't know. I was so shit excited. Your bag. Oh. And then you have to walk your bag it of still shit gets over good. to an area that's a fire. And then you have to throw your bag of shit into fire. Wow. I did that. <laughs> it was horrifying. And then they stir it, right? Because the wind caught it. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't make it. You it have didn't, to it didn't, your gut. <laughs> so you're <laughs> What did she say? You have to pick up your caca? I did, yeah. <laughs> Face, and I, get, I didn't want to shit, but I had to shit. And they go, well, here's your bag. You go here. And I'm like, what? It's like, just go into this bag. But they oh, put it in the port by me. So I go into the bag. And then I'm like, well, now what? And the soldier, this Marine, sorry, walks me over to a fire. It's a huge, I mean, like a huge ah. fire. And there's a wall, and you have to throw your bag. You have to clear the wall. So your bag goes What happened if he doesn't bug? It didn't. So the wind catches my bag. Oh. And, <laughs> and I have to walk up to the shit pile, to and the pick burning up your fire, and bag. pick up my shit and throw it again. Oh, my God. I had to do it twice, Charles. It was a nightmare. Oh my God, look at the moon. Please look at the moon. Look at the moon. Is that a painting or what? You ever take a shit somewhere weird, Mom? Yeah, but stop. No, I'm seriously. No, yeah, honestly, it's not, it's not even a tiny bit funny for me. That she, she, doesn't want, she doesn't like that, that topic. So. It's the only conversation I have with you guys. What do you mean? We don't talk about anything else. Yeah, we do. You shit, you know, shit, the shit in here, the shit in there. <laughs> yes, it's and you make your fire. How do you shit in a war? I mean, it's... But have you ever had a situation, Mom, where you, you didn't get to shit where you wanted to? Yes. Where? In your bed. <laughs> your bed. <laughs> You didn't get to shit in my bed? I, I get to shit in your bed. I have to wake you up and I need to shit so I just shit. And that's what you love. Know. Oh, it's Christmas. <laughs> 
So we still got a reaction. Out of her. She said, um, "No, I didn't." I, I said, "When you ever get the shit somewhere, you don't." She said, "Yeah, you're bad." Yeah. And I said, "You didn't." She goes, "No, I did. I woke I woke you up. You didn't get up. So then I just shit right there." You said, "Oh, it's Christmas." <laughs> so you get a little bit out of she it. She hates when we talk about brown. Yeah. She gets so mad, but can, that's so much fun. Can you? Um, uh, hold down this down for a second while I pee. I had a pee too. You have to pee too. Let's pause and pee. Come back. Take like a pee break. Okay, we'll pause and pee. Okay. But look, um, we got we got to get going here pretty soon. So okay. I'm Bye. not gonna, I'm not gonna leave you with nothing. Hey buddy, it's top dog. Hey buddy, it's top dog. Hey buddy, it's top dog. <laughs> you need to wipe hey, down. Buddy. Top dog. <laughs> it's been a while, so yeah. I thought it'd be fun to get the uh, the big guy on the horn. The four one one. What's going on with TV? See what's going on, man. Let's fucking find out, right. man. Okay. Let's talk to him. Not too long ago. It's good stuff. Mm, I can't wait. Hello, Tommy. Yeah. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Hey, what's up, man? Ah, <laughs> uh, just chilling right now. Just chilling. Chilling. Good. Chilling. Good. Um, yeah. I haven't talked to you in a little bit. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's going good, you know. Good. It, uh, been been feeling pretty good, you know. A little traveling. Hit the Orlando airport the other day. <laughs> uh, the infamous Orlando airport. Yeah, I was in there. Uh, had to catch a flight to uh, Memphis mm. and uh, heading out of the terminal. And all of a sudden, I felt one coming on. I needed to. <laughs> needed to get in there and take a dump pronto <laughs> so i go into uh, one of those you know terminal air uh, men's rooms yeah you realize that like to get pronto. to get this you i have to uh, do nothing but just say how right, you doing right he doesn't even ask you like so what's up <laughs> no, with I your know, life so <laughs> how's your career how's the wife yeah straight into it. i took a so shit i was in taking a shit in yeah. orlando airport I love and orlando. every stall is full except the uh, handicap stall Really? So, so I charged in there. You know, I really came on strong. Uh, sat down, <laughs> dropped my load immediately, and then I looked in, and there was only enough toilet paper for one wipe. Oh, oh my god! And this wasn't a single wipe dump, I'm assuming. Oh, well, this was at least. This is probably a five, five, maybe six wiper. Okay. Oh, is it? Man. Would you classify it as like a glider, or? Um, you know, a blaster or something like that, or is it just a... No, it wasn't a blaster, but it was um, in between um, a slider and a sloppy joe, okay? In between. In between. <laughs> hey, will you turn okay. the TV down in the background a little bit? Every yeah, conversation. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Every conversation with my father for 10, 15 right. years. Can you please right. turn off the television? And you know what I hear, too? A lot of... Oh, of course. <sighs> He's Every so excited time. to tell you the story. He's very fired up. Yeah. yeah. His heart's racing. But one shred of toilet paper for, for a sloppy Joe, sl- a borderline ooh, sloppy. Yeah, bad. What are you gonna do? Let's let the mystery. Yeah. What r- happened? <laughs> resolve itself. And so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I look over, and normally, you know, as I've told you before, when you're traveling, you got to check to make sure this. Pay- I didn't. This, I had no choice in the matter. You didn't do your recon. <laughs> Well, I couldn't do a recon because I had to go, and oh, there was right. no other stalls available. So, you know, it was either there or on the floor, okay? So right. okay. so what I did was, all of a sudden I noticed <laughs> that they have those, you know, toilet paper covers that people use. The, the toilet you know, seat cover. Toilet seat. I never use them personally, but... Um, you always just sit on the seat? Yeah, I did. Yeah, sure. Just set on. See, too much trouble to use those things, and then you, you position them wrong, you end up hitting them. You know what I mean? And then you create yeah. a bigger mess. So I don't <laughs> use them. But what I found out mm. is you you can take those, tear them in little pieces, and use that as toilet paper. <laughs> Look at that! Wow. Stop! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Why is he opposed to using them in the first place? <laughs> Why? Uh, Why is he opposed? He's a fucking, you know, he's an old school fucking nom vet. He doesn't s- sit on tissue to take a shit. Can I tell you something? I've actually done this myself. You've done it? And I do it frequently. Wiped with the C cover? Absolutely. Every time they're out of TP, that's the first thing I go to. Because that's kind of, it's comparable. Yeah. It's comparable too. I wipe my ass. I wipe, uh. I, yeah, I'll do it. It's uh, it's very impressive. Well, I'm glad to see your father shares the same wisdom. Well, And this is the first like time it. for him. 
but First I can't believe this. I can't believe that's this is breaking news. That's ingenious of you. Yeah, well, you know, you got to improvise, you know. Yeah. And here's the other thing I discovered. I think if, if you always have a choice, always use the handicap stall. Now, this is assuming there's nobody with a wheelchair sitting out in front of it, okay? <laughs> but they have a sink in there in case you got to wet the paper or wet this. Yeah. Sometimes you get one of those, you need a little water. You can just kind of lean over to the faucet and get a little water. But I'll tell you, these uh, the, the toilet seat covers work great, I, and it's solid material, so mm-hmm. it's soft, but you know you couldn't punch a hole in it with your fingers, but it did the job. So you were able to clean up completely? I was able to clean up completely, and then what I did was, um, I, I, you know, after about 10 minutes, I went into another stall just to kind of check myself to see what kind of, I used some real toilet paper, and, and I, I was clean, so I, it, it, it works. Wow, that's yeah, really that's so, really something. So this this is a new discovery I'm I can't for me. You. Okay, so my new modus operandi now is always try to find a uh, handicap stall because most of the handicap stalls have the toilet seat covers. I did a little reconnaissance after I was done, and not every stall has <laughs> the toilet seat cover. Oh my god! But your handicap stalls generally do. So that's now my first choice on travel as a handicap stall. In a way, it's kind of um, sort of fascinating that even mm. after all these years, mm. you're still learning stuff about <laughs> shitting and toilets and wiping, you know? Well, you know, it, 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 is, it is. It's amazing. You think, you know, you think about it. For most of us, this is something we do 800 to 1,000 times a year, right? Right. Depending on how off you go. Uh, right. No. So you look at the last decade, you know, you're talking 10 to 12,000 times. Sure. And I, I agree with you. I, I uh, you know, I feel more confident now when I go into airports knowing <laughs> that I have a backup plan. Yeah, that is, that's really something. I mean, yeah, and that's something that, you know, before that happened, you didn't know that probably about toilet seat covers. So you can use yeah, them. and here's the other thing which you can do, too, just as another thing. You know, a lot of these places, they don't use paper towels. Mm-hmm. But I, I started, I, I, I took a paper towel out of the bathroom and stuck it in my right rear pocket just in case I got someplace where they didn't have anything. Kind of a, oh. kind of my, you know, think, think of it as a spare tire in your car. Oh, that's <laughs> perfect. That's absolutely what it is. And it's a protective measure is what you took, right? It's a protective measure. Keep them right here so in case I run into another, you know, stall. And because not every place. You realize now. This is amazing. That for the rest, I'm ba- I promise amazing. you for the rest of my father's life, if I go up to him and I reach into his back right pocket, mm-hmm. There will be a paper towel in there, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, "What's this for?" Just in case I go somewhere, and they don't have a paper. Ta- they don't have toilet paper. I can wipe my ass with this. It's gonna be his backup <laughs> shit paper. Can I can I tell you where I also agree with Top Dog here? Yeah, I've recently begun to only use handicap stalls as well oh, yeah, in airports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, number one, when you have carry on luggage, it's much easier for me to roll my bag in there. Mm-hmm. Unless I do see somebody who is legit handicapped and I feel, or someone with a child, yeah. a woman with a child, I'll feel really bad, but I'll yeah. still use it. I'll just yeah. I'll hurry up, you know? Yeah, like a Mexican or something. Mm-hmm. He's right about this stuff, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's absolutely, he's on point. He's, he's yeah. really stepped up his game, actually. I feel like he's the Oprah of shitting. Absolutely. Yeah. Hands, if there was networks, he, <laughs> he owns SHT Network for sure. As a toilet seat cover. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So what you're saying is keep a spare tire for when (laughs) shit is unexpected. Exactly. Exactly. This way you're totally prepared. Mm. And and so, you know, it's a... uh, Felt pretty, you know, I, felt pretty, I felt kind of pretty good about this. Now I know how, you know, Louis Pasteur felt, you know, when he discovered, you know, bacteria. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Felt kind of the same way. That's great, man. Mm. Have you had, um, <laughs> you know, you're always very proud of your farts, and you have any? Have you had any farts in public lately that have horrified people? Well, I tell you, went to the movie tonight. You're not going to believe this one, but I went to the movie tonight. And I'm walking in to, uh, just to take a leak, and I didn't think anybody was behind me. So I, you know, I, I just kind of had a little boom, 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 one right after another. Hmm. <laughs> Some poor guy followed me into the, into the bathroom, so he got a he got a little whiff of that. Oh, but that wasn't good. No way. <laughs> oh, I have to tell you what happened on the plane. Oh, this is great. I'm sitting there on the plane. I'm on the left 
You hear how excited he is to tell so me this? So excited. Really This excited. is like, he. it's almost as though he's retelling the story of your birth. Yeah. I got to tell you what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like, I found, mm-hmm. I found $100,000 mm-hmm. in a fucking lunch bag today. I'm on the A seat and there's a guy on the C seat. Nobody in between us. Mm-hmm. So I'm just sitting there and I, I, I have to, so I have a, a couple, you know, I just kind of muffled them. A couple of farts? But eventually, yeah. I muffled them. Nobody could hear them. But eventually, the smell left the seat. This guy had a coat. He put the coat up to his nose, <laughs> seriously, and held his there's nose for at least for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Looking over at him like, <laughs> Did he know seriously. it was you? Did he know it was you? Well, I don't know. You know, who knows? Yeah. But, but, I, you know, but... You could see that it was just killing him. It's funny. <laughs> you really do have real, and I'm not just saying this because you're my dad and I'm proud of you, but you have the most powerful farts of anybody I know. I do. You know, when I was having dinner with uh, your sister, we went to some Japanese restaurant. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, she says it's the MSG in the food. But I want to tell you, it was brutal. Oh, really? That night. Oh, my God. And did you share a room with her? No, 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 uh, no. Did you? Her. No, no, that would just kill her. But yeah. uh, <laughs> even by my standards, yeah, they were bad. Well, I know we shared a hotel room uh, a few years last ago. June up in Maine. Yeah, no, but even before then, I'm trying to think of there was this other there was this one trip I went on with you. I can't remember, and we had dinner, and you farted, and I I actually left the room. To go get matches because I just couldn't handle. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. It was it was very it was upsetting how strong it was. It was. But weird. my favorite was when I was at the movie theater one time and I did one. Yeah. The whole row behind me got up and moved. Yeah, that, that's a classic. Yeah. The AMC mm. the AMC theater. Yeah. That was that was um, that was really you know that was kind of like you know um, a hole in one if you're doing farts kind of thing you know yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and i i expect that you know as you know as you get older all of us uh as you get older your body you know it, it's always kind of decomposing i i wonder if, if as you get older let's say you get into your 70s or 80 whether your farts will get stronger and more powerful i don't know you know yeah. I, I really don't know <laughs> i think a lot depends on you know your diet and all that other stuff. But, but don't you sort of hope so? Don't you hope they get worse? Well, actually, actually I do because, you know, it's, it is kind of, you know, you see lions out in the Serengeti when they stake out their territory, you know, with sure. their scent. That's what I do. Yeah. Wow. Same kind of thing. That's you know? kind of fun, to, I'm sure, to, to drop one of those on mom every once in a while, right? Uh, she doesn't. She doesn't think it's cool. No, I I, I know. I know. She it's doesn't cool. Think it's cool. She does not think it's cool. <laughs> I know. But you know, part of enjoying life, yeah, is to make the most out of everything that you do. Yeah, and you definitely now, do that with your farts. Shit, sure, Well, we all do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, Shit. women. You know, women are funny. It's like, it's like my sister. I don't think my if, if my sister's probably never had a fart that any one of us knows about. Yeah, never. You know, if she has one, she, you know, I'll get I got to get some water, so she right. probably goes in another room and does whatever. People do she does. that. Some people, um, <sighs> I know, people will uh, will go to the bathroom just to let a fart out on the toilet. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. You know, that's I mean, stupid. you know, and there are different ways if you're in a public setting that you can. I mean, I I know how to squeeze and, and sit where I can, <laughs> yeah, there's different ways. I'll, I'll have, next time we get together, I'll teach you some of those techniques. Oh, I can't wait. I can't lucky. wait. Um, I, well, I, got him, I kind of got him down pat, personally. Hmm. Thank you, Dad. Thanks for, um, for that, and um, it was good talking to you. I love you, Dad. Uh, okay, love you, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. There you go. Wow. He's yeah. our, our Jean-Paul Chartres, <laughs> if you will. What a fart. What a man. Um, yeah, so that's our show. So much wisdom. Uh, uh, was, existential. What a great conversation, right? Really good. Make the most of every moment, even farts. Mm-hmm. That was, uh, that's really... I've never mm-hmm. heard anybody say something like that. And it was full of uh, practical advice. Mm-hmm. Use the handicap stall. Uh, toilet seat covers for wiping. R- keep uh, a reserve of paper towels a in your back tire, pocket. A spare tire, if you will. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of wisdom. Very, very, very Top good. Top Dog is, is getting richer and deeper with his analysis. Absolutely. Guys, if that doesn't make you want to get a Top Dog shirt, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, wow. Do you, do you have time for this? Hey, buddy. Oh. It's Top Dog. Hey, buddy. It's Top Dog. Hey, buddy. It's Top Dog. You need to wipe hey, down. It's <laughs> Top Dog. Spoke to the man today. All right. And um, had a really, really interesting conversation. Okay. Touched on a bunch of different topics. Hey, buddy. Oh, shit. Oh, jeez. Um, oh, blue band. Would you like to get right into it? I'd love to. Let's just get right into I it. I love it. And then we can, you know. How you doing, buddy? Good. What's up, man? Ah, you know, I just uh, went out to uh, went to one of those sushi joints for dinner tonight. Yeah, you are you a sushi fan? I hate sushi. You do? I hate anything that hasn't been cooked. I'm pretty much like meat and potatoes. So you're not really I got the, you're not really an adventurous eater, I would say. No, I like you know the. I like stuff that's tried and true. So I like, uh, yeah. I had, you know, scallops and shrimp. A lot of times I get filet mignon, scallops. shrimp and scallops. <laughs> scallops. But, you know, all this uh, fancy curling up stuff. Curling yeah. up. You know, uh-huh. I mean, it's, it's not for me. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of these, these young women today, and that's, they're really into that. Young crowd's really into that stuff. The young you know? crowd is into the sushi. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, young gals. Particularly the girls. I mean, it's like you know, it's 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 like vitamins for them. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's unbelievable, you know. And the and is it like what? he sounds like? You know, when you get to the point where you realize your your parent or parents are like, oh, you're really. This is when the aging's really taking effect. When you're starting <laughs> to say like. Gals <laughs> yeah. love their vitamins. I mean, sushi, and you're like, "What the yeah. fuck are you talking about?" It's incoherent. It's yeah. sweet brown. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like, "Ain't nobody got time for that." No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they say and when they order, you, you, you know, I don't even know what they're saying. You know that I love sushi, right? You love sushi. I love sushi. Uh-oh. By the way, Uh-oh. by the just just for just before we continue. This is the kind of shit I deal with my whole life. My dad, he has known that I love sushi right. for 17 years mm-hmm. right now. You like sushi? Like, it's like, were you paying attention at all? But I don't think we've had it with him. N- Believe me, I've been ordering it since high school. Okay. She, like, I would eat that five days a week. I mean, I can't. I can't. I can't stand it. Quite frankly, did you ever? Did you oh, ever? Yeah, that was the dog. Sorry about that, guy. <laughs> Fucking goddamn dog. Actually, try it. Yeah, you did try. It. What did you try? I don't know what. I don't know how to pronounce any of that stuff. Well, I mean, how about like white fish, tuna, salmon? How about those words? First of all, I, I, the only kind of tuna I like is tuna salad sandwiches. Oh my god! Now there, put some eggs, some pickles, mm-hmm. mayo. Jesus, <laughs> you know. A little salt on it, mix it up real good, put it on some nice white bread, make myself. You're really straining. Are you taking a shit right now? <laughs> no, I was moving. I was up and letting the dog go out. Already took, had my quote of three today. Three? Is that your, na- that's your normal quote? Huh. Oh, yeah. Three, three, three every day. Three. Absolutely. Never. Absolutely. Wait, yeah. there's the 8.15 a.m. That's the only one that I knew was certain. What else is there every day? Well, you know, I usually sometimes after have have lunch, sometimes, you know, that triggers kind of a a mini gas attack. And anytime I start blowing farts, you know, 30 minutes later I'll be dropping one in the in the toilet. Really? Absolutely. Did that. And then, you know, a lot of times I'll have one, you know, uh early evening. You know, after dinner, it seems like once I have a meal, it kind of pushes, pushes things through. That's nice. And uh, so normal, normal is, um, huh. you know, it usually bombs away three times a day for me. Wow. I didn't realize you were up to that already. Yep. Um, <laughs> that's really great. You know, your lack of 
adventure when it comes to eating. It reminds yeah. me of this kid. When I was in Spain, when I studied that semester in Spain, uh-huh. this kid, um, we would meet, like the group would meet together like once every couple of weeks. And after our, like basically our second session, we were all talking about settling in. And he was like, yeah, the only thing I can't get over is how bad the food is. And we were all like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? And he goes, yeah, I've been eating at Burger King every day. And we're like, you are living in Spain right now. <laughs> and you eat at Burger King every day? And he was like, yeah. You're kidding. Even, even I. That's even a stretch for a guy like me. Yeah. By the, for the record, that is 100% true. Right. I remember and you telling me that. it blew everybody's goddamn mind. And this kid was like, he was looking at, the funny thing is the kid was looking at us for comfort. Like, he thought we were all going to be like, yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, let's go to McDonald's. And yeah. he was just like so alone. Everybody was like. What are you talking about, man? But there's always that one kid when you study abroad yeah. that refuses to stop being American. Spanish food I know, is it's like unbelievable. The best. Well, there was a kid in England that we dared him to eat uh, four quarter pounders with cheese, so that that equals one pound of McDonald's yeah. beef. Oof. Yeah, he did it. Oof. He was from Tennessee. But at least that was in England where you're like, all right. During the year that um, that foot and mouth disease was yeah. there or whatever it was oh, called. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. You would, you would, eat. you like like French food and Spanish food. I think, yeah. I think first of all, you know the the thing that there's not much that the French do that they're number one in the world in. Mm-hmm. You know, uh-huh. <laughs> but one thing they are number one in the world in is food. They, they, love they can food. cook oh, the sauces. Yeah. And you know, when you look around the world, you look at a lot of the top restaurants. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot in this country, particularly. Lubeck Finn and you know remember the Masonette in Cincinnati and yeah. different places they're French restaurants oh yeah the, uh, yeah what's it called the number one usual well, number one a lot lately has been uh, the French Laundry which is a, a Thomas Keller restaurant out here and then his other restaurant per se in New York is also French yeah, yeah. I mean they, they and um, they just know how to cook yeah. you know it's probably what they do best in the world is is cooking yeah yeah i, I agree uh, and you know what i you and i both have um like a real love of just really i mean obviously i think i like more different styles and flavors but we both like um like going to a really good restaurant and well i remember we were up in maine and we just wanted to chowed out a lobster and we had a hard time finding a big a big lobster in any restaurant that was weird and then but then remember we asked the right person and they were like oh yeah go over to this asshole's place and and they had the big ones you know yeah i mean i i actually had my i had a uh, <laughs> four and a half pound lobster in uh, minneapolis one time i don't know why he keeps straining what's the strain about i don't, I don't know well i, I had whole terror downtown oh, i'll never forget it that thing and the claw meat oh, i got something great. set up for when you're out here to get some uh some big ones in you and this is when we should make our announcement just so you guys know <laughs> top dog and charo are coming out to la what? and they're going to do an entire episode of your mom's house can you even believe that Can you wrap your head around that it's gonna be a crazy. full episode of the two of them. You know what we should do is take questions from listeners if they Absolutely. have any for both Absolutely. of them. Absolutely. We'll definitely do that. Big Lobster. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good. Yeah, you know, and when you, you know, when you shift from the kind of basically, you know, I would describe my diet as like the all-American diet, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meat, potatoes, a few veggies. Not too much fruit. Every once in a while, some fruit. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. You know, but when you go to those like lobster seafood things, that screws up your your your, uh, your schedule a little bit. That fucked me up when we were having all that seafood. It was definitely yeah, a, yeah, a, a shift. Definitely, I mean, it basically the whole the whole texture, the whole smell, the whole thing changed. You know, and that's why you kind of have to be oh, being so. kind of a guy that's experienced like I am. I know how to deal with those. I can take those curveballs and handle them. Yeah, you can. You're I can. You're, you're a real pro. Hey, I wanted. I, I told you earlier, but um, I wanted to just refresh this. So, just so before we continue here, um, this is actually a really good time to mention this because Top Dog and Charo are coming out here. Why don't you guys go ahead and send your questions if you have questions for them? They're coming out in. 
March. Send it to uh, your mom's house podcast. Is that right? Yeah. No, oh, fuck. I'm sorry. Your mom's podcast at gmail.com. I know it's super annoying that the name doesn't fucking match the show. And that happened because a long time ago, I just thought it was too long of an email address. And I realize what a huge mistake that is. But, anyways, your mom's podcast at gmail.com. Any questions that you have that you want asked to Top Dog and Charo, they'll be in studio. So it'll be unlike any other time when we call them. They'll be right here live. We're going to keep them here as long as we can. And we're looking at, you know, hopefully a couple hours of them. We're going to hit all the bases. We're going to do all the regular segments, everything that we haven't done. We'll do it all, you know, but uh, a question segment might be really fun. Okay, so back to this now. Just that I'm, I started going to this place where we're, we're doing a lot of powerlifting in this gym. Oh, yeah. Like these oh, yeah. powerlifting, basically group classes. And um, I was, this is true, guys. I have started doing this. Thinking back to, you know, how dedicated, you were a competitive weightlifter. 1961 Kentucky featherweight champion. Uh, 19, see, in the 1962 fourth from the Teenage Nationals in Chicago as a lightweight. <laughs> and then I uh, also was the 1975 Ohio light heavyweight champion. Jesus Christ. 181 and three quarter pound class. Okay, so when you weighed 181 and three quarter pounds, Tell me your best lifts, like your best lifts, just so I can have this in mind while I'm lifting. Well, I mean, my, my you know, in those days, uh, they eliminated the press, but prior to that, the press was 245, my best press from Snatch, which was my signature lift. I was 255, and then Clean and Jerk with 305. So were you good at Snatch? My signature lift. I, I really had people, literally at competitions, would come up to me and, Say to me, I don't know how you do that. Because you're just so good at it. I, I was, I really was. <laughs> you, so humble. He loves talking about how good yeah. he is. That shit. For people that don't know, this shit, this is true. He was a competitive weightlifter for many, many years. And my childhood, I remember just watching him, you know, power lift in the either garage or the basement, like. He loved some fucking weightlifting, man. Loved that shit. And was really, really good. I mean, two-time state champion. This is before, this is way before people took supplements and all that shit, you know? <laughs> hey, you uh, told me earlier, you were like, God, I was good at that. <laughs> oh, I was so good, at, so good at the snatch, you know? I could. How good are you at bar. public speaking? Oh, I'm born to be a public speaker. I love public speaking. <laughs> Uh, Let's put it this way. The bigger the crowd, yeah. the less nervous I get, okay? Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. So yeah. just so I, I remember, 245 was your best press. 255 was your snatch? Yes. And 305 was clean and jerk. Clean, clean and jerk. How about power clean? How much could you power clean then? Best power clean I ever did was uh, 290 once power clean 290. That's a lot. Yeah, but you clearly... Closer could get over that if you clean and jerked 305 yeah yeah but i was i don't know what made me i think i had gained a little weight i was probably around i put on a little weight i was probably about 190 mm -hmm. when i did the 290 power clean mm -hmm. now did you do uh, the, back in the day you guys didn't did you do supplements and you know creatine? no none of that stuff none of that stuff nothing. i mean this was all nada zero nothing uh, there was, I, I heard of some people in the country were using a steroid called Dianabald, mm -hmm. uh, but it was, I never, eat, you know, prick, meat and potatoes, a lot of steak. Uh, How many days only, a week were you eating steak? Oh, I would say I probably had steak three or four times a week. Oh, my, oh my God. God. <laughs> How did he shit? <laughs> oh, my, my God, God that's a lot of red meat. Well, first of all, I'm living by myself. Yeah. Number two, when you live by yourself, you want something you can cook. Get out the old frying pan. Yeah. Put the old T-bone on the frying pan. 
Yeah. Uh, turn the exhaust fan on in the kitchen, make sure all that. And, uh, you know, have that thing. I used to have broccoli. I like broccoli. And then I put a little mayonnaise on the broccoli, give it a little flavor. Oh, my yeah. God. You are such a fucking barbarian. Mayonnaise. And, uh, you know, A1 sauce, of course, which I think A1's is the world's great. greatest condiment, is A1 sauce. I've been I mortified with you at restaurants. We're like in a high end steakhouse, and you're like, "You guys got a one?" And they're like, uh, "For what?" And you're like, "For this forty dollars steak I just bought." Jesus. Well, remember, it's me. I'm trying to satisfy, not them. Okay? I, go, I, I hear you loud and clear. I agree. Uh, and so I like I'm not sitting there too. And I know, uh, we've so- literally been to. I mean, I was uh, playing it down. I mean, the best steak houses in America, yeah. and they bring out uh, the most gorgeous perfectly prepared and seasoned steak. Yeah. And they're like, anything else we can get you, gentlemen? And I'm down to go, get some A1. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, um, some A1 for, and he's like, for that steak. And I like, like it too, though. I feel like, I like that tang. Mm-hmm. It's like perfect. It makes, it makes even really good meat. Even I gotta better. be honest, it does make me it. a little crazy. What? I mean, it's when like you're talking about... It's like ketchup on your rice. You have to do that too. Yeah, but the difference is that that rice is bland and flavorless. Mm. And the steak that we're talking about is like out of this world. I know, but I would actually ask for A1 more than I do if I weren't eating with you. Because I know that you feel that way and that you probably get really, really? mad. Yeah. No, I would never get yeah. mad. No. I, no, I, and I, have, I feel like it's an insult to the restaurant. It, it depends on the level of restaurant. If we're at like a, like a really nice steakhouse where... Like that's what they do is they have like this yes, dry age. Yes, and I want I really? want a one. Really, I still do. Oh, please never hold back. I never want to do that to you. Oh my god, it's making me feel terrible. Well, you should be. You're judgy. You're right. elitist about your steaks. I am a little elitist about you my steaks. are totally. But I sit down there at night and have my chow down on that, and uh, you know, and then go to the gym. Typical workout in the gym, average two hours. Jesus, and it was just nonstop fucking go. Oh, you know, you'd have, uh, you know, you might do work on the press. You might do 10, 12 sets with the press. Are you serious? Absolutely. Yeah. 10 sets. So, 10, sometimes more, you know, depending on what we work on. And then, you know, work on the snatch, and you do power snatches, and, you know, uh, you would... And then you do snatches off. And so we would probably do, you know, again, minimum of 10 sets of, of snatches. Christ, this is crazy. And then you do, you know, your squats. And then you do uh, you know, practice your jerks out of the rack. And then you work on your power cleans. And, uh, All right. you know, and so then finally finish it off with... Uh, a whole bunch of squats. So you do all that. It takes about two hours. Now you got you were so dedicated that you would pass on like dates to work out, right? Right. I mean, I, I worked out every Friday night, and I would leave work, had my gym clothes, go to the gym, work out, and then if I was going on a date that night. Uh, it would be, you know, wouldn't be till later, My like eight thirty. But um, and if the girl was like, "Well, pick me up at like six thirty, uh, she didn't get picked up. Okay. And were you like, "Bitch, I'll pick you up when I'm done, and I'll oh, let you no. suck my Jeez. dick"? Oh, oh. No, no, I never, I never talk like Fuck that. Fuck you, I just, you, stupid bitch, like Tom. that. I, I, I'd say, look, <laughs> I would say, you know, it's my priority. And and oh, I got to tell you what happened. Christmas nineteen seventy two. Going out with this girl, and it's her first her, her Christmas party for a company. She worked for First National Bank in Cincinnati. So, you put it in her ass? No, no. This was this was just a uh, you know very Babe. nice conservative girl. Okay. You know? So we're um, you, know, you know she had the long dress on, and I had the coat and tie on, and uh, so we're going to her company Christmas party, and she's kind of showing me off to all her friends God, I'm like the man in her life and all that shit okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's about midnight and I said it's getting late I, I gotta get going and she says what do you mean you have to get going this is a Christmas party I said no but I got a contest I gotta drive to Louisville tomorrow because I got a weightlifting contest tomorrow well shit 
January 4th, we were history. Oh, really? Mm. Yep. She was like, yep. your weightlifting is a priority over this puss? That, exactly. And, yeah. of course, what she didn't understand oh, is God. that, you know, and then I had another girl one time. Well, what she didn't understand is that, that you can get pussy in any city at any time, so I don't need you. And is that basically what you said to her when you broke up with her? She broke up with me. But you were like, no big deal. Bunch of, I can cook a lot of puss out there without you. I don't need you, bitch. <laughs> You say that? Well, it wasn't exactly the the words that I used. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, genuine oh, though. Shit. We were history. And then you know, a year later, I had another girlfriend, a nice, nice girl. And so, one of the things about weightlifting contests, unless you're you're like married to one of the contestants, they're pretty boring to watch. I bet they are. Um, but so uh, there's another story, but I'm gonna save it for next time. It's it's one of it's one of the, my it's one of my favorite stories ever. It's one of the best stories he has ever told. But I'm gonna save it for the next show. Yo, this is officially our longest podcast ever. What should be? It's a celebration. It's a celebration. Yeah. And We're all getting drunk. Here. We have a celebration Yee. to keep the celebration going. We have a very oh my gosh very special treat. Last week I told you I was going to play you um, a story that I left off of uh, a top dog call and i was going to do that this episode but what happened was i got a call from top dog and the most amazing thing happened and we were able to record a call with him it just it just it was so special that it happened yeah right before the hundredth episode it's, it's what's known as a blessing in the skies in the skies Hey buddy, it's Top Dog. Hey buddy, it's Top Dog. Hey buddy, it's Top Dog. You need to wipe hey down. Buddy, it's Top Dog. All right, guys. Uh, this <laughs> phone call <laughs> I love that. happened. <laughs> you were cheersing. You can sell that as a ringtone, by the way, on iTunes. I know. Just have that part yeah. right there as yeah. a ringtone. Ninety nine cents. Yeah, I trust know. me. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it's going to go up. It's going to go up. Actually, um, I've been organizing a, a whole a library for to ringtones. A library. Brody library. Stevens. Uh, you know, Brody just yeah. released an app. It's a soundboard of like a hundred of his sayings. Oh, really? It's, uh, it's I'm fucking amazing. How much is it? Nine nine cents, I think. Maybe one nine. Who knows? Um, bro, love Brody Stevens. Um, okay, so this phone call literally recorded today in celebration, just for this. Okay, here we go, jeans. Yeah. Pull them up. Hello. Hey, Dad. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good. Are you eating? Just chewing down a little salad, get a little fiber in the old intestinal tract, kind of clear the clear the path for the you know my next big one. Uh, um, well, uh, Christina's here. Hi, Top Dog. Hey, how you doing, Christina? Good. I miss you. Um, really miss ex- you too. I'm excited about to hear your story. Uh, oh. So let me tell you, this is a really big deal because this is episode 100 of our show, and. Um, <laughs> It's kind of obviously um, a big a benchmark that we've crossed, right? I mean, oh it's, yeah. And uh, you're obviously, um, you know, one of the regulars, one of the the hands down favorite uh, guests of the show. And I, you called me yesterday just by chance, the day before we are set to do our hundredth episode, and you had the most amazing thing to tell me. Oh, well, it was just unbelievable. Saturday, I, I had to get up early, drive down to um, kind of a seminar in Palm Beach. And when you get up early in the morning, sometimes you don't shit because you're, you're sitting, you know, it just just doesn't happen. We so, know this. We know this from flying so much. Oh, yeah. And so I, I went the whole day, didn't shit once on Saturday, okay? <laughs> So Sunday, I only I did one in the morning, one in the afternoon. But I'm still I'm still down two shits, okay. <laughs> okay. And so I, I get up Monday morning. I have this very important meeting with this person okay. involving a lot of money, okay. Okay. And I, I go. I'm driving to my office. I have to pick up the paperwork in my office, and all of a sudden, I feel it coming on. <laughs> and I and I do the old, you know, fast walk, 
squeezing my cheeks together trying to make it to the bathroom. Uh-huh. And I and I had a squirter while I was standing up. Oh. <laughs> How, wait, now what level of, <laughs> of, of uh, damage are we looking at when the squirter hits? Well, this was, this was, this was major league damage because <laughs> when I got in the bathroom, I had, I had it on the back of my, the back of my calf <laughs> on the inside of my right leg. Really? Oh, my God. Really. And so I'm sitting there trying to clean this thing off. And I also noticed when I sat down on the toilet seat, I completely con- had it all over the toilet seat. <laughs> so, so wait a minute. Where did you do this, oh this temporary God. cleanup? At the office or wherever you stopped? At the office, okay. Uh, so now what I have to do, holy I'm shit. Meeting, this, meeting this lady for breakfast <laughs> in 27 minutes, okay? So I clean up as best I could. Still stink. I stink because I got it in my trousers <laughs> on my clothes. And Wait, what do you smell have, like? Smell like shit. Okay. <laughs> and so then I had a little air freshener in the car. I mean, in the in the bathroom. So I I cleaned up the toilet seat. I sprayed air freshener on there and cleaned that up as best I could because I didn't. You know, the next person's going to come in there. Yeah. So I call I call your mom. I say I told her what happened. I said lay out a suit for me. Call my secretary and I say call this lady. Tell me a few minutes late. I says I won't have time to stop on the way back. So print up these documents and have them. I'll call you when I'm crossing the bridge. So I ran home, ran in the shower, took a little one minute shower, cleaned everything off, put on a new new underwear, new suit completely. Uh, had to check my shirt to make sure I didn't have any on the back of the shirt. That can happen sometimes. That can happen. Whoa. Yeah, that can happen. You know, and and so. Got my car, reared back to the office, but she was out, out there waiting for me. Kind of just drove in, opened the window, she handed it to me, drive down to the club for breakfast. I was only 12 minutes late wow. and yeah. closed the deal. Wow. Right. So even after the, all that disaster. Duress. Are you, are you really, are you, are you actually digesting what's going on right now? <laughs> That's so <laughs> crazy. It's so crazy. This is a shitting the pants story. Does he, do you think he's maybe doing this just to make you happy because he knows you no. like poopies? No. Or do you think he's really like this, this is, this is real, crazy? It's Dude, all real. He shit his pants. Oh my god! Ran home, showered. No, first he went in the bathroom, cleaned, had shit all over himself. Mm-hmm. Ran home, showered, got on a new suit, drove back to the office, got the paperwork, drove to his meeting, and then closed the deal. <laughs> Was only twelve minutes late. After yeah. shitting himself, that's that's remarkable. It's really remarkable. Yeah, the duress you were able to to prevail. Well, let me. I, yeah, sorry, Todd. Dog, able to prevail. How did yeah. you get home? So, I mean, you wore your pants on the drive to your house. Like, oh yeah, I, I had to wear the pants on the drive to the house, right? Yeah. Oh, so it's all in there. All the browns in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <laughs> I had to, you know, I had to make sure that um, the best I wiped ever. myself down pretty good. It, it's but let the windows open in the car just in case to get that <laughs> smell out. And I don't uh, know if, if that's one of those things that just opening the windows would get out. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, but, was it uh, a was it a straight just juicer? Is that what uh, I mean? Yeah, was, absolutely, absolutely straight <laughs> juicer. Kind of, you know, if this was a real. A real squirter, you know, and wow. uh, and it was it was messy, and it was. And you, you were know, fighting it, was, it. You were fighting, right? Because you were. You I were, was fighting it, and yeah. but here's the mistake I made. Okay. I tried. I tried to walk too fast with my cheeks closed. Uh-huh. What I should have done is stopped, <laughs> kind of regrouped. Mm-hmm. You know, take wait a deep for the breath. pressure to come off. Yeah. Take mm-hmm. smaller steps into the bathroom, and I would have made it. But I tried. I, I just it was you know just a tactical error on my part yeah. by trying to walk too fast. And when you do that, the cheeks don't stay close on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh-huh. is, uh, this is twice in seven months then that you, you've hit it, I think. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so it's a sign you know, of... Uh, the, um, the thing that I really take out of this too, besides the fact that it's a, it's a great, great story, is, um, is how you were able to keep your calm and... And really get what you needed done, even though you would just, you know, shit your pants. Well, you, you know, you can thank that to my Marine Corps training. That's you know, right? Yeah. yeah. This is, you know, I'm a then, combat vet, combat veteran from Vietnam, and you know, ah. literally when the shit hits the fan, you still got to get the job done. Right. And this and, was literal shit. 
this was really the shit hitting the fan. Yeah. And I had, you know, I couldn't sit there and, and feel sorry for myself or, no. oh, shucks. You know, you, it's had to deal with it yeah. and get it, get it done, and, uh, and I was able to do that. And you were like... I've got a meeting. I've got to be at. So you you just were all about getting the plan executed at that point. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But it taught me a great <laughs> lesson. Next time you feel a big one coming, mm-hmm. take your time. Take, take your time. Your time. There, at, I rushed it. I rushed it. You know, yeah. it's like the guy that tries to beat the red light and gets T-boned at the light. Right. Okay. There you go. Right. Man. It's the same. Can you rush it? You know, I should have stopped, squeezed, let it settle, mm-hmm. tippy toed in. I'd have been fine. Like contractions to birth. You Less contract to, exactly. Yeah. You, exactly. You can't force that out. Yeah. yeah. Can't force that out. And yeah. let me tell you, this thing, it was when I say it was you know, when I dropped my pants and I saw hmm. brown. Oh, it hit the floor too. <laughs> <laughs> it hit the floor. Wow. Well, it hit the floor. Wow. So, well um, you know, I gotta say, um, it's, it was a great, great story, and yeah, thank you. For what sharing. a treat for episode one hundred for our listeners to get. to Well, you know, it's all. I always try to educate your listeners because yeah. you know, truth of the matter, this is something we all do every day in our lives. Yeah, and the more you know about how to do it, the better your life's going to be. So this, you're like kind of the Doctor Oz of the radio network. Oh, right, wow. right, it's true, very true, very true, and. Um, I got to tell you, the listeners are so excited about you and mom uh, making an, an appearance in studio in, in a month. They're already sending in their questions, and I remind them that you can keep sending in your questions for Top Dog and Charo at your mom's podcast at gmail.com. That's your mom's podcast at gmail.com. And when they come in, Top Dog and Charo will be answering your questions uh, at the end of March. All right, Dad. Boy, that's that's going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we love you, and thank you so much for um, the great story for episode one hundred. Uh, okay, buddy. Take care. Take care, Christina. Love you. Love you, Top Dog. Bye-bye. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Bye bye bye. There you go. Okay. I mean, well, look, he knows those things because he's a marine. But can, what about the timing of? This happened it's, 48 hours before episode 100. It's like the, the stars of sharding aligned. aligned yes. Yeah. I mean, how could you, you... You couldn't make this happen. You couldn't predict no, something like that. absolutely this not. Absolutely not. And here it was. What a special, special, special treat. Very special. I had to make that right turn. And when I made that right turn, some of the shit came, came out. I got to work on making those turns into the bathroom. Now I know I'm not bugging. I said, oh my God. I feel this shit coming. Am I going to make it? On my drive home and my belly is bubbling And I gotta work on my turns When I get in the house, feel the shit slip out And the rocket really is a hug Cause you know I'm trying to bust a nut Talk about that ego, ego sex, sex. 336, come from Los Angeles Have you ever had your asshole numb, suck? Cause Hillary Clinton just ate my butt Now I know what you're thinking about out of them dicker Fuck what you heard, I'm a ass look